The previous tutorial had a flame sprite component with a colored background that was changing when the girl hit the edges. Today we'll be learning about layers in the game, pre-rendered layers, as well as color tint layers. Grab your favorite background game image and drop it into the assets slash images folder of your project. Remember to run flutter pub get. We will be using the bedroom as a sprite in a pre-rendered layer. Let's get things started by declaring the three layers that we will use in our game. The first layer is the dynamic game layer. Layer is a keyword from Flame and you must import the proper package layers. Once the layers package is imported, you should be able to declare your variables with a layer for the other two layers without any syntax errors. Let's call ours color tint layer. And the third layer will be the background image layer. So this will be the sprite. At the bottom of your file, create the background image layer, which extends the pre-rendered layer. Just as a reminder, there are easier ways to create the sprite as the background. You could use a sprite component. For example, the layers is for increased performance or a substantial effect on one of the layers. This tutorial focuses on adding a tint to the background layer. If you don't want to add any special effects or you just want to get it up, I would recommend using a sprite component referred to the previous videos. For the pre-rendered layer, our constructor will accept a sprite and the size of the pre-rendered layer, which will be the size of the game screen. We're now going to need to draw the layer onto the canvas. So there's a special method that we'll override called draw layer. And then we're going to use the sprite and render it to the canvas. So the background is just a sprite. And it's the size of the game screen that we'll pass to it. Let's get going with instantiating our background image layer and then rendering it to the screen. When we pass the background image layer, the sprite, we're going to load the sprite from local storage. So we're going to have to use the await keyword uh, for that sprite. So the property is sprite, and then we're going to await load sprite and the name of the file. The second size after the colon is the size of the flame game. So that is built into the flame game, the second size. That's how we know how big the game screen is. The exciting part is to go into the render method of the flame game, and we're going to render the background image now. It's always a very fun and powerful step to see the image come up. So it's, it's the name of the layer and then dot render the method from of the layer and then pass it the canvas. And let's restart our game here. Boom. Man, it's so beautiful with these pre-made background graphics on the internet. And thanks to the people at the Doki Doki Literature Club for putting that together. In addition to the pre-rendered layer, the flame game also has the dynamic layer. And this is the layer to use for things that move on the screen and need to be redrawn. Again, you don't need to use this layer system. You could just use sprite components and even use a sprite component for the, the, the background image. However, you may want to use layers for one reason. And if so, this is how to use the layers. So let's set up the game layer as a dynamic layer. Dynamic layer being a keyword from the flame layer system. Because this is the entire, like most of the objects on the screen for the game, we're going to pass it the entire game as one of the uh, pr parameters for the constructor. So that's how we're going to access a lot of the pieces of information that we need. As an example, we're going to use one of the preprocessors from Flame. This is from the Flame example in their uh, source code. Um, and there, there's several different preprocessors. This is just an example to show that there are preprocessors that you can apply to the layer. All right, now we're going to draw the layer. Draw layer is a method that's built into the layer, the, the, the dynamic layer. 
And, you know, I'm going to use this null check to see whether the sprite is there, whether it has loaded or not. There's probably a better way to do this, but this method will work, uh, at least for this tutorial. I'll have to do a bit more research on how to not use that exclamation point in, in front of the dot render, but I'm just going to force it in for now. And then we'll access all the pieces of information that we need, the, the girl position from the game. So girl was instantiated in the flame game, and that's how we have access to girl and the girl's position. The girl is a sprite component. Once we set up the, the layer for the game objects or the game layer, we can now get back to the emotionally exciting part of actually rendering that layer out on the screen. We're going to need to first instantiate the layer. And then after the uh, it's instantiated, the game layer, then we can render it out here. But since I'm here in the render method, I'll just type it out first. So it's game layer dot render and then pass it the canvas. And up above, let's uh, instantiate it so we actually have access to that variable. We didn't get a syntax error here because there's a late keyword, but it won't actually run because when it looks for the uh, game layer at this stage, because it hasn't been instantiated, you'll get an error. So that late keyword is a bit of a it's a bit of a dangerous uh, keyword. And because the game layer it re requires the game, I'm past it this. Okay, it's working. Uh, she looks a little small. But you do notice that she has that shadow from the preprocessor, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's other preprocessors that we can experiment with in the future. And that's one of the reasons why you might want to use the layer so they can process a specific set of sprites all at one time. But the girl's a bit too small for this demo, so let's try to increase it a bit. Have to reload it. Yeah, it's looking a little bit better. Let's drop her down and have to always do hot restart. So let's hot restart it again. And she's in the right position, but uh, I think for the demo, she's probably still a bit too small. So I think I'll increase the size. Always a very fun part to fiddle around with the size and the color of the, of the screen and the characters and uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll go with this for now. Let's get to the more interesting part of applying the tint with a layer. The basic concept is that there might be different moods that you create with different types of lighting within a room. So, you know, maybe something scary happens and it becomes either darker uh, in the room or lighter or maybe red to signify that something catastrophic has happened in your game. I'm just going to comment out some of the other, uh, the, the background component that we use. So the previous video did use the sprite component to get the background image. So again, this layer thing is more complex and you, you don't want to use the layer unless you really need to either for performance reasons or, or you want to, or you want to apply additional preprocessors on it. So this entire layer tutorial is a bit more, maybe a little bit more advanced, but maybe also maybe a little bit more fun because you can experiment with uh, some of the tints and also the preprocessors. And there's a whole bunch of ways to blend the colors together. So I'm just going to show you one way to blend the colors, but you, you can just go wild and keep experimenting with it. So it could be a lot of fun in the future. We're first going to start off the layer, the color tint layer as a pre-rendered layer uh, because initially we'll start off with one color and then when we need to change it, we'll change it to a dynamic layer uh, in case you want to change it in game. So the canvas has draw color which we used in the last video and you just pass it a color. So I'm going to use the material colors here and that should be colors with an S. I believe I think that's a that's a typo there so blend mode is new um, well I, I guess we covered it in the last video but there's a whole bunch of options for blend mode we're just gonna use 
dot screen. It's one of the many ways to blend the colors. So let's instantiate our color tint layer here and then render it. And the, the priority I wish you render it is going to add the color on the layers above it. So we can either uh, apply it to all the layers, uh, the tint, or just maybe to the background layer and leave the girl untouched. After the layer is instantiated, just go to uh, the render method and then it's uh, color tint layer dot render and then put the canvas in the parentheses. So you can decide where to put it. If you put it above the game layer, uh, the background layer will have the, the background image layer. So that sprite for the background layer will have the tint and the upper layer, which is the girl is on, will not have the tint. And you might like this because it focuses more attention on the girl, but also doesn't create quite as dramatic of an effect. So it's up to you how you want to flash the color on the screen. So by changing the order, you can see how it looks with maybe everything. Like, let's say she walks into a room with a, with a red light and you kind of want to give that effect. I actually haven't played Doki Doki Literature Club, but I, I did he hear uh, from some people familiar with it that there is some, some violence in the game, so there might be uh, some scary moments. I added the list of colors to the wrong layer. This is actually the background image layer that I'm in right now, so I'm going to cut and paste this list of colors out and drop it into the color tint layer. So there's a small error uh, in, this, in this video tutorial, tutorial right now. Uh, I just got confused and uh, I was in the wrong layer. Okay, so now this color tint layer, I also need to set it to dynamic layer because uh, you know, I was in the wrong layer before. But we're going to cycle through the individual tint colors by using some type of index. I'll initially place it at 2 so we can see that you know, just to be sure that the color is working so we can apply a blue a blue tint to it which is uh, array uh, index 2 and this is not recommended but I'm just going to create this global variable outside the classes because uh, you know that you dealing with state is very critical but also it might be a little bit confusing so just to get through the tutorial and uh, being able to access this variable from both classes, I'll just create it as a global variable right now. It's definitely not the best practice. Okay, so if you choose black initially, uh, and the way that this blend mode works, uh, it won't have any effect on her. Okay, also put this uh, increment for the color index in the wrong conditional statement. So when she hits the edge, the right edge of the screen is where I want to actually increment the color if the color hasn't reached the end of the index. So if there's only five colors, right? So if it's if the index is at five, we're going to pause the game engine and the demo will be over at that point. So she's going. She looks good. She hits the edge and it didn't work. I left this part in to help with the debugging. So the reason it didn't work is, as if you remember, I got confused and I uh, didn't set the thing to the di dynamic layer. Without being a dynamic layer, it's not going to redraw. So hopefully now with the dynamic layer, when she hits the edge, it will redraw here. Boom. Okay, so now second color here is red. First one was black. And the third one should be blue. So it's only when she hits the right edge of the screen that we have it set up here. Um, so we, it's giving us a little bit of time to assess the color tint here. So there's a lot more you can experiment with this. Um, you could also just you know, use it as a, like a solid color background for you know some quick tests when you're building your game and you can then pick the background later. 
so that you know a solid color might signify a certain mood or something very quickly while without having you to grab the graphics uh, it's kind of a fun way to do it okay hopefully you're having fun with flame remember that the person having the most fun is usually the most successful person out there and I really do believe that learning to build these games will help you become a better programmer and have fun. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course if this is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.